Welcome to The Daily Word. I'm really glad that you've joined me, and and thank you so much for doing that. And today for our Daily Word, we're going to go into John chapter 12 and verse 15, where the Scripture tells us that Jesus, in His triumphal entry into Jerusalem, uh, the, the event that we celebrate on Palm Sunday, Don't be afraid, people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming, riding on a donkey's colt. And the scriptures here are uh, pointing to two passages in in particular that uh, Jesus, in in this moment, is bringing to fulfillment that the scriptures have been pointing forward to. And the first one is from the book of Zechariah, from chapter 9 and verse 9. And the other passage that this is pointing to is from the book of Isaiah, from chapter 35 and verse 4. And I'd like to, to share with you um, from uh, about verse 4 to, to 6 from this pas- passage in, in Isaiah. It says there, Say to those with fearful hearts, Be strong and do not fear, for your God is coming to you, is coming to destroy your enemies. He is coming to save you. And when He comes, He will open the eyes of the blind and unplug the ears of the deaf. The lame will leap like a deer, and those who cannot speak will sing for joy. And, and so I want to point out here, as, as Jesus is the fulfillment of these, of these scriptures, what it shows us about the Lord and His heart for us and His ministry uh, of renewal, of redemption in uh, in our lives. And first thing that I'd like to point out here is that he says, be strong, do not fear. This is in Isaiah 35 here. Be strong, do not fear. And what we find is that whenever the Lord gives us in his word a command, he also gives us the power and the reason to fulfill it. That actually um, our, our obedience to the word of God is also by grace. Right? We are saved by grace, and we know that. We don't deserve it. It's not our effort. It, it belongs to the Lord. But also what we know is our obedience and our transformation. Certainly we, we um, put effort into it. We make decisions. We, we enter into discipline so that we're following the Lord. But we acknowledge that that transformation is a work of the grace of God that our obedience is actually enabled by God. And so we're receiving power from God in in a certain way here to be strong and not be afraid. How is that? Well, we're told God himself, right? This is is extraordinary language here in, in Isaiah 35, which again is fulfilled in Jesus. God himself is coming to destroy your enemies. And what we understand now uh, we understand this fully from the scriptures that our true enemy is actually not flesh and blood, that we actually are in a spiritual battle, and that the enemy of our souls actually has us captive because of our sin, because of our fear of death. And it is Jesus who, by his cross, liberates us from his, uh, his hold over us and, and indeed destroys our enemies. He is coming to save you, and indeed, by His cross, by His grace, He has. He has saved us. That is, He has restored us to God. He's reconciled us to God by His cross, and He confirms this. This is is really amazing stuff because as we're tying in here with Isaiah 35, we're actually being pointed to other scriptures too. Uh, For instance, if you want to look at, at Luke chapter 7, verse 22, where uh, John the Baptist is in prison. He sends a messenger to Jesus. Are are you really the one? Just confirm this for me. Uh, I'm facing my death. I I just need that reassurance. And Jesus says, you know, tell him about what you've seen, that in fact these things are happening. The blind uh, have their eyes open, unplugging the ears of the deaf, lame leap like a deer, and, and so forth. And those who can't speak will sing for joy. And and so he says, it, this is confirmed by the miracles, right? But not only that, this truth about Jesus is confirmed by the Holy Spirit. In uh, twelve sixteen uh, of John, we, uh, we see here his disciples didn't understand at the time 
that this was a fulfillment of prophecy. But after Jesus entered into his glory, they remembered what had happened and realized that these things had been written about him. And so when he enters into his glory, that is after his ascension, we know that the, the preceding event is the, what's called uh, the day of Pentecost, when the believers receive the Holy Spirit. And it is by the Spirit that, that we understand the Scriptures, that God gives light, gives understanding, where we can actually see and make these connections and, and hear from the Lord in, uh, in our lives. So it's confirmed by His miracles that this is the truth of who He is, that He is God come to us, come to save us, and confirmed by the work of the Holy Spirit, giving uh, light to the Word, uh, making the Word alive, apply to our lives, and, and so on. And what I'd like to point out finally is that what they're seeing as the Holy Spirit really opens the Scriptures so that they can, they can understand fully that it's all about Jesus, is that open to them and open to us is the fullness of the salvation of Jesus Christ. That He came once, yeah, for sure. He obviously did. He came and He, he taught and He opened the way of life and He demonstrated uh, who He is. Uh, he showed who God is, the very character and nature of God. We, we've seen His glory and, uh, and He has ascended into heaven, but He has promised that He will come again. So He came once, He lived, He died for us, He rose again, saving us from our sin, and He will come again, and He will bring the fullness of the restoration of creation. And so as we're looking then uh, in, in Isaiah uh, 35, let me just get back to it here, uh, what, what we're seeing is a glimpse of the fullness of the redemption that Jesus will bring. And this sounds an awful lot, doesn't it, like Revelation chapter 21. Those who have been ransomed by the Lord, and we have been ransomed, right? He has paid the price for our redemption. They will enter Jerusalem, God's holy city. They will enter Jerusalem, that is the new Jerusalem, singing, crowned with everlasting joy. Sorrow and mourning will disappear and they will be filled with joy and gladness. So what I'd love to invite you to do is to allow the Holy Spirit to give light to these passages to see the fulfillment of God's Word in Jesus Christ and, and to, to really see the fullness of the work of salvation that Jesus is doing. We have an amazing God. We have an amazing Savior, a risen Christ, the anointed one of God who truly is bringing a work of new creation in us and ultimately his return to the whole of God's good creation. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. And until we get a chance to speak again, I pray that God would bless you and keep you.